thing. Happy New Year to all. Happy last day of Kwanzaa to all who celebrate. So glad you're kicking off your New Year's with us right here on the WBZ Morning News. And uh, we would like to kick off the New Year with a look back at what happened in local politics during 2022 and a look ahead to what's going to be top of mind in the coming year with our guests. Katie Lannon, the must-hear State House reporter for GBH News. Happy New Year, Katie. Happy New Year. And Matt Murphy, ace reporter for the State House News Service. Happy New Year to you, Matt. Happy New Year, John. Great to have you guys back here. So I asked our guests in advance to identify a top local story of the year gone by that might not be quite as obvious as you might think. Katie, let's start with you. What do you got? I mean, I think one of the threads that really went through this year was there was so much happening in the immigration policy realm. We, in the spring, we had advocates finally claimed a victory and got a law passed allowing uh, undocumented immigrants to be eligible for state driver's licenses. The yeah. governor vetoed it, the legislature passed it again, and we saw... That was upheld by the voters in November. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, the opponents of that really had to scramble to get that on the ballot. Right. So there were a lot of kind of high feelings on both sides there. We saw Ron DeSantis uh, sending a, a plane full of people to Martha's Vineyard uh, to make his points on immigration policy. And even now, we're continuing to see more and more migrants arriving in Massachusetts straining local resources. The governor's been pushing for more resources for, for housing and shelter and school services. And we're uh, still waiting to see what happens there. There's a reasonable guess that this will be, will, will continue to be a big issue in the coming year, I would think. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, the, the governor, yeah. of course, has filed legislation seeking additional money to support right. the shelter system that Katie's talking about, find temporary places for these people to stay while they get them services and find them more permanent homes. The legislature hasn't taken that up. I assume it's going to come up early in the next session, uh, starting in January. Uh, lawmakers are going to have to consider uh, what they do with, uh, you know, resources for, uh, you know, the homeless population here already right. uh, limited. And as we all know from past history, you don't want to mess that these sets of issues up they can be very volatile uh, politically as we go forward okay man looking back what grabs you well I, I may have ignored your uh, suggestion to go for overlooked but okay. uh, I couldn't help but go with the Supreme Court decision overturning Roe and while this was a huge national uh, decision obviously and played out in the midterms I think we saw it trickle down in a number of ways throughout Massachusetts both in uh, elections here uh, down ballot legislative races we saw it playing out. It also really further drove that wedge between Governor Baker uh, and the Massachusetts Republican Party to the point where we saw losses across the board for Republicans, uh, really to the point where we're almost at a one-party system here in Massachusetts, and I think the, the ramifications of that are going to be felt for, for many years to come. Well, actually, that sets me up neatly for my uh, suggestion, which is uh, uh, the day after the primary. Jeff Deal, the Republican gubernatorial nominee, uh, at a moment of maximum media coverage, you know, the, the morning after, for a campaign that desperately needed it, held uh, his, his big photo op of the day was in front of a nondescript building in West Roxbury, flanked by Jim Lyons, the uber-Trumper chairman of the Mass Republican Party, who's presided over just a devastating run of defeats for the party, uh, losing offices down the Cape in this cycle, uh, uh, not to mention losing ground in the legislature. If you believe the two-party government, or at least some semblance of a, a second party, is a healthy check in, a, in our democratic system, that's got to be a big lingering story, the, the implosion of the state GOP. Yeah, especially with the election of Maury Healy, you know, Democrats in control across the board right. on Beacon Hill. And, and what really happens is it's, it consolidates all of this decision-making power in the hands of the few. You have the governor, the top legislative Democrats making a lot of decisions, and there's really no incentive for uh, members to push back and offer new ideas because they're trying to work within this larger party structure.